I believe with all my heart that we are better than the campaign that the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party is running. You know, the choice in this campaign literally could not be clearer. Yeah. It's Hillary Clinton yesterday in New Jersey. Let's bring in right now a guy who usually when he talks could not be any clearer. He is, of course, <laughs> famed political strategist uh, James Carville, also Clinton supporter. Hey, James, uh, this Bernie Sanders phenomenon is pretty crazy. You usually don't see even after it looks like a guy is mathematically uh, close to being eliminated, crowds getting bigger, more money pouring in, more energy in the campaign, more of a push. It's a crazy phenomenon. We've all been talking about Trump on all the networks and all the newspapers. But what Bernie's done in the Democratic Party is nothing short of astounding. Um, what, what's happened? Why does he continue to draw those type of crowds? And how does he bring it in for a landing so the Democratic Party's not split in two by July? Yeah, look, it has been phenomenal. I, and I think, it, you know, he's raised a bunch of money. He gets large crowds. That There's one difference between he, he and Trump, and it's a pretty big difference, is, is Trump is the nominee, and he's not going to be the nominee. But I, I think that the, the Clinton campaign, I think they're quite aware of that, that they're going to have to bring him in the fold, just like Senator Clinton but then had to come in the fold in 2008 with, with President Obama. I mean, the, the Democratic Party has decided by over three million votes that they want Ms. Clinton to be their nominee. But Bernie's the phenomenon. It needs a kind of voters any political party wants. They're young, they're energetic, uh, and uh, the voters that you want in November. Every vote that, that, that Bernie Sanders gets in the spring here is somebody that you want to be voting for you in, in November. And it, it's going to take some skill and some negotiation and some political dexterity to, to bring him in a fold. So, James, you're a big supporter of Hillary Clinton's, but I you're am. not advising her currently, as far as I know, on any right. regular basis. If you were, would you, on two questions, how important is it for them to win the California primary? How much would effort right. would you put into that? And two, what would you do after that, given that she is going to be the Democratic nominee, right. what would you do after that to try to make peace with Sanders on her well, side? Well, first of all, of course you want to win the California primary. It's the biggest state, and, you know, Obviously, I, but, and I'll be very clear here. It's hard to lose an election. I, I mean, even you know, you you, lose, you say you're going to lose, you lose in West Virginia. It's hard. You hate to lose. So, but I mean, uh, would you go spend millions of dollars to try to win California instead of uh, like money that you could otherwise spend against yeah, Trump? I, 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 that's a hard question for me to ask because I don't know the state of their financials right now. But I think it would. It's certainly something that you'd be much better off doing and give you some momentum going to I think they they need to let Sanders' people. I think they got to let this play out. A little bit, you know, and and, and he it's not an equal negotiating position because Bernie Sanders does not need Hillary Clinton because he's not going to be the nominee. Hillary Clinton needs Bernie Sanders because she's going to be the nominee, and so that that gives you you have to understand walking into that negotiation you're not in an equal position. Now this has happened before it happened in 2008 in our party. I. I don't think it's going to be an overly, you know, as Trump is a huge problem, but it's going to be something that's going to have to deal with, and it's, he's going to have to retain some semblance of that acknowledgement for what he's accomplishing this. I don't think there's any doubt about it. James, when I got my first job in a campaign, I went and watched War Room because what you guys did, you and Paul and George, you innovated beyond that which had been sort of right. conceived in campaign strategy. Trump, I think, admittedly has now innovated <laughs> beyond <laughs> that which anyone has ever conceived in terms right. of campaign strategy. How does Hillary Clinton, a traditional politician, sort of launch an asymmetrical defense against what Donald Trump is throwing at her while also fending off what Bernie Sanders is throwing at her. What, right. Well, I mean, for, I mean, I, I mean, first of all, she, she, let me be, you know, she is going to be the nominee. And she's going to be the nominee. She's got substantially more votes, but I, I'm not denying that Bernie Sanders is. I think that her challenge, and I made it pretty clear this, in a country that kind of wants change, you cannot be any more change than Donald Trump is. I mean, right. if you say, I want, I want change in this country, and you look at Trump, you go, well, i got one thing you got to say. He's, a, he's different. He really, he's really <laughs> different. I, I think that her challenge is going to be how, you know, what's your life been about in change, and how do you want to change things, and how are you going to be able to bring that about? You can't, you can't out-change Trump, but that, I don't Wrong think you really need to do that. You can't just be status quo either. Right, you, but you can't be status quo. And if there's one thing you don't want to be hooked with is that. Okay, it's the middle of September. Right. 
and change is the essential item on the table of most Americans looking right. for direction, looking for hope, looking right. for the future. Donald Trump has tried to eviscerate the Clintons personally. He's right. gone after the former president of the United States. Right. You have a candidate running against Donald Trump, Secretary Clinton, right. and, and unfortunately for her, and it's cosmetics only, uh, a lot of men in this country look at her, hear her, and all they can think of is someone telling them, get back into class, homeroom is over. Right. Uh, <laughs> what do you do? Well, first of all, How do you I, run I, that I, campaign? I, 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 first of all, I think there is a problem that her negatives are higher than, than, than people would like. That, to be, acknowledge that. I think that you, you got to have a good summer. I think the convention, I think they have some things that they can accomplish at the convention. I think there's a lot of things out there that they can say and they can weave a better narrative. I mean, look, they've been running against a guy, Bernie Sanders, you know, has promised $18 trillion and $33 trillion in new spending, and he doesn't get the same scrutiny, nor should he, because he's not going to be the nominee. She's got to, you know, I think her narrative has to, be, has to really get better. She's got to be sort of more change. <clears throat> you know, her whole life has been about been about changing things. I mean, she, in some ways, she's been almost a pioneer in her career. And they got to tell that story better. But you're right, they do have a problem. They do have a problem. I think that that's, and they know they do. And, and I, I, I really expect them to be addressing that during the, during the course of the campaign. But it's not like Trump All doesn't right, have James. problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, James Carville, thank you so much. As thank always, you. we love having you on. You bet. Coming Appreciate up, it. he used to back Ted Cruz, but will Congressman Steve King and others like him line up behind Donald Trump? Well, the congressman's going to join us live ahead of Donald Trump's trip to Capitol Hill. Also, my good friend Matt Salmon's going to be here as well to answer that same question. You're watching Morning Joe. We'll be right back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.